guys today is friday it is the last day of the school week i figured i'd take you along with me for a day on the job a day as a first year high school teacher all that fun stuff so i just got to school and I just parked, I think it's about like 7.50ish. School starts at 8.20. I usually get to school anytime between like 7.40 and like 8. It just depends on what I'm doing that morning and you know, if traffic is bad. I live kind of a bit away from the school, which you know, it's definitely worth it for me. Um, even though it is a far drive, it's like, I love this school so much, so it's, it's worth it. But so today what I'm thinking is I'll take you along with me for a day in my life as a first year English teacher. Probably give you guys some planning tips. I'm gonna head in and we'll get this show on the road. <laughs> It almost looks like a stage. So if it were a normal year, you bet we would be doing some kind of like Romeo and Juliet theater type situation. But you know, with social distancing and everything like that, we can't can't really do that, but that's okay. Speaking of social distancing, there's nobody in my room. So I have my mask right here. If I see anybody at the door, I can quickly pop it on. And I am always wearing my mask when anybody is in the room, when I'm outside of the room. Um, anything like that but once I first get in and I sanitize everything I just kind of like have some me time which is really nice only on odd days we're, we're block scheduled so today is a white day it's Friday so I have my second period for planning and CT meetings I am going to hop on to my CT meeting in about 10 minutes it varies sometimes it's it's 8 20 sometimes it's 8 30 it just depends on the group and uh, what we have to discuss or get done that day so it's always a little bit different but I'm gonna head over to that head over I'm just gonna log on to Google Meet but yeah so that'll be good oh my god they updated the bell and it is something else it's like next level but it's all good what are you gonna do so that's kind of what our day is gonna look like today I'm gonna take you along with me as much as I can I don't know if I said this at the beginning but I'm a first year English teacher um, and I teach ninth and eleventh grade I graduated from JMU with my undergrad and then I stayed for my masters so I think that covers everything I'm gonna take you guys along with me as much as I can but just being a first year teacher there's you know some stuff that it's just, I gotta focus. <laughs> but I'm gonna try to kind of show you guys what it's like to kind of experience a day as a first year teacher, um, as a high school teacher. And if you like my content and if you are interested in sticking around and seeing more from me, um, make sure you subscribe and I hope you enjoy. <music> I just finished my meeting with the 11th grade team. They're fantastic. I just, oh, they're the best. It's hard to be a new teacher and it's hard to be the only new teacher in your department just because you don't really have that same kind of, hey, I have no idea what I'm doing. Me too. So I think it's it could be a little bit hard, but they're so wonderful. Every question I have, they anticipate questions I might have that maybe I'm too embarrassed to ask, which is one tip of like, don't be embarrassed to ask any questions because chances are like, it is not a stupid question. If you are trying to figure out how to be the best that you can for your students, 
ask it. it doesn't matter what it is you're trying to do your best you're coming from a place of love and learning ask you know if people judge you for it that's their problem but yeah they're just so wonderful and supportive and all that good stuff so you know it's always really really nice to start the Friday with them so I've got about an hour before I have my next class um, which is W4 this is great because it gives me an opportunity to plan and this tends to be unless I'm really busy and I'm like changing something around for the day that I didn't expect this tends to be when I do my planning for the week ahead. So I have a couple different ways that I like to plan. This is something that is still evolving for me. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there eventually. But the first thing that I love so dearly is my planner. Truly, I don't know what I would do without it. It's the Day Designer Planner, and I love this like Lily of the Valley print. I think it's so pretty. It's kind of like banged up just because I literally take this everywhere with me and it has withstood all of my use. It's got a hard cover and it has beautiful design. It's a daily agenda which is a little bit different. Of course it has you know your typical monthly layout. I've got all of my events and everything, all the big standardized testing, all those kinds of dates. I've got when my grades are due for the quarter. I put everything in there on that monthly view. It has a layout that looks like this. I can show you guys a blank one. And then we can go into how I plan and what I write in there and all that good stuff. So this is what the layout looks like. We have a today's top three. Do, dollars, dinner, don't forget. And then we have the hours. And then we've got a to-do list here. So again, it looks like this. We've got our hourly list and our to-do list. The top three here is so helpful to me because I have a tendency to come up with things and create things for myself to do. Oh, I got some Expo marker on my finger, but I tend to, you know, compulsively create tasks for myself. And so to list out what are the three most important things I need to do today, that's super helpful to me because it helps me to remember that I am productive and that I've been productive today. Then you can go here and write Write out your appointments or I like to write out my class times every day if I have an IEP meeting I will add it in here so I know exactly okay I have my classes then I have a planning period and during that planning period I might have a meeting and all that stuff it begins at five o'clock and it goes all the way down to nine o'clock which is another ingenious thing because I never really schedule things past here anyway but once it hits nine o'clock you're done you don't look at this anymore and then you've got all these little tick boxes which I love I think it's really really helpful sometimes I'll start off on sticky notes I have a bunch all different colors but I'll start off with a sticky note I'll write down like school and then a list of things I need to do for school and then I'll get a different color and I'll write personal and I'll write down all the things I need to do or me then once I have those together I can look over here and I can write out exactly what I need to do because sometimes my mind is all over the place and I really need an opportunity to draft up what I need to do for example all of these things are I mean I just absolutely like wreck my planner just because I have a lot on my mind and I want to make sure that I kind of get it all out. So I have my class schedule on here. Again, I have my English 11 meeting at 8.20 and I have Pride Time. I just abbreviate as PT. Pride Time is like a built-in study hall and that is from 10.16 to 11.08. Then I have my W6 class and this I like to break up into chunks because it helps me kind of plan my lesson. I get a little bit caught off guard sometimes if I forget when the lunch bell is and so I I like to break it up so we have our class this is all one class these two 11 16 to 11 48 is the first chunk of class then we break for lunch and then we come back at 12 18 and finish at 1 22 and that just helps me figure out okay how much time do I have you know if I have an activity that is going to take a while I don't want to start it at the beginning because we won't have time to finish it we'll get broken up in the middle we'll lose momentum whatever it might be it helps me make decisions like that so sometimes I will come up with 
a lesson plan idea or I'll hear one from another teacher that I love. This one is from one of the teachers that I work with and we're talking about privilege and diversity and social justice and all that kind of stuff. So this is a just kind of brief idea of what that lesson is. It's on Ben and Jerry's and how people can use their platform regardless of whether or not they actually are in a political field. So how an ice cream company can stand up against inequality and injustice. And so we're going to watch a video on their political activism and what they've been doing to help, you know, get people out and register to vote and all that good stuff. And then what we are going to do for the activity is they're going to design their own ice cream flavor. So they're going to draw the little carton and then they're going to come up with like a catchy name for their flavor and then they will decorate it. So the example that I came up with is freedom and fudge for all. We're doing this on Pear Deck. Because of the pandemic, we don't pass out markers and stuff we can't let kids share that kind of stuff and most of my kids are online so it's just easier this way Pear Deck has a feature where you can draw and illustrate and all that good stuff so I just use that as an add-on with my Google slides and then this is only going to take about 10 to 15 minutes I'm going to set a 10 minute timer check in with them and then we'll take about two to five minutes to share out if anybody is interested so then back to the main overview of our planner I really really love daily gratitude, any kind of notes, no speak English. We're reading The House on Mango Street and that is one of the vignettes. So I just write out to help myself remember, okay, this is what we're doing that day. Got it. Check. We're all set. So then the way that I experience productivity is I judge myself quite a bit if I don't get a million things done. So something that's really helped me this year, especially with everything going on, it's been insane for everybody and it's really taken a toll on all of our mental health. So what I have started to do is I will write my daily gratitude or my daily affirmation and then I will go in and put in my top three and I try to again keyword try I try to always make sure that one of the top three that I have written for the day is something for myself so not something work related something either my relationship to myself to my family to my friends my mind my body all that kind of stuff I try to make sure that I put something in there for me because I'm learning to make myself a priority and learn to take care of myself. Honestly, it's a hard thing to do. And another thing I love about this planner is that they have little positivity or happiness or empowering quotes at the top. So it says, plans are great, but living is better. So this is my view from my desk. I have my little manatee buddy here. I have my hand sanitizer, of course, and then my lotion. And then I have, I mean, I'm a sticky note girl, so I have sticky notes everywhere. We're going to be reading Dear Martin in ninth grade, so I have just some of the themes. My library dates, I keep them here just because I know they're coming up, and if I don't see them, I will forget. So every morning I come in, I turn everything on, plug everything in, and get started. So I will always open up my email, just because it's really important to me to be able to be in contact with my teams all the time. Then what I will do is I will open up Google. I'll go to Google Classroom and I just want to make sure that I have this up so I can get to all of my links. I have all of my different classes set up here. I have my R1, R5, and R7. Those are my red day, odd day classes and I like to have them all be the same standard photo just so that I it's easier for me to keep track. Then I've made a separate class link for my office hours, and this is just helpful if you need an extra Meet link. We do all of our classes, Google Classroom and Google Meet, so it's just always really, really helpful to have a separate link if a student needs to ask you something privately and doesn't want to do it in front of the class, and I always make sure that my kids have access to this. So again, just like I have my red days organized with the same photo, I do the same with my white days, just so it's easier for me to categorize and I just know what I'm getting myself into. So what I'll do is I'll click on W4. I will kind of keep this open just so that I can have access to that meet link as quickly as possible. Then what I'll do is I have my attendance. I like to keep them in here. I have a folder out of the month that it currently is and then a folder of ones that have been completed just because it helps me keep a cleaner space. Every month I will make a new 
a tenant's lane. I'm trying to make them a little bit on theme. So April has this funky, bright colored flower print and then a blue background. The February one had hearts on it. March had jam rocks, all that fun stuff. This is Google Forms. I just use this as a attendance link. I have, I'm so happy you're here today. I try to really remind them of that, that I love to see them and it makes me really happy that they're here today and I value them and they're wonderful, wonderful kids because they are. So then they can go through and click, okay, I'm in your W4 class. That'll take them to section two. You can have certain questions, jump them down to a different section. This is great for me because it helps me have a more organized list of who was there that day and what their responses were. If I click W4, it'll take me down to section two here. I put my first name, my last name, and did you attend class today? And then I had them choose which puppy are you today? I love these little mood scales. So usually I get like a one, which, you know, he's jamming to music, kind of like vibing through the day, trying to get through. Sometimes I'll get an eight if they're just waking up. And my favorite, favorite, favorite to get is the five because it's just comfortable and safe and happy and cozy and just the cutest. And so I always tell them if you ever feel like a six or a nine or a two, please let me know so that I can help you. So they just choose their number and then I ask them a question. So sometimes it's a two part question, sometimes it's two different questions, but this one is when or where do you feel your most creative? And then tell me more. So all of the sections are pretty much the same. It's just split into each period so that it's easier for me to keep track of. And this is an evolving thing. Sometimes I'll ask a little bit deeper questions, sometimes Sometimes I try to keep it light just because not every day needs to be super deep, but I do try to get them to think critically about the world and to investigate what they're feeling, what they're thinking about. These are my agenda slides, which I love. This is from last class on Wednesday. So I have the date, I have our agenda of whatever we're going to be doing. I have the link to my office hours, the bell schedule, any reminders that they might need, and then like a journal prompt or whatever else is necessary. And then I always try to have some paired up questions and stuff like that in there. We did a little bit of a journal on expectations, and then we went into an imagery mini lesson. And so this was just on imagery and the whole idea of show, don't tell. So this is last class, and then today we are wrapping it up with a new lesson. So that's open, I've got my attendance open, and then I'm going to finish it off with opening up my W8 materials. We are in a unit on Dear Martin. That's our last unit for the year. So again, I try to do my slides weekly. We've got some announcements, some videos, all that good stuff that was last class. And then today we are going to be working on our civil rights movement project. They all chose a different topic. They are going to learn about how to find reliable sources and use databases. And then they're going to get some work time today. So now that I have all that up, I like to organize them. So one of the biggest things about virtual learning is that you have millions of tabs open at any given time. This isn't very many for me. Normally it's like tons and tons and tons, but on Chrome, you can create a new group. So add tab to new group. It's gonna pop up a little button like this. I can name this resources for today. Usually if I have more resources per class, I'll do like a W6 tab or a W8 tab, whatever it might be. Then I will click out of it. My resources for today tab is open. I have my Dear Martin Google Drive page in there. Then, since I'm not going to be working on my W8 stuff right now because that is at the end of the day, I can click on it, drag it in here, and once you see that it's highlighted in your color, it's in there, and then I will keep out everything that I need for my next class, which is W4. So I will keep up my Google Classroom page, I will keep up my attendance page, and then I will keep up my slides. But now that we have these three tabs in our resources for today, click on resources for today and it'll close everything into that group. If I need to access them again, I can just click on it and it'll expand. But this is such a fantastic tool for when you have millions and millions of tabs open, you can organize them into different groups. And then the last thing that I use regular monthly wall calendar. This really helps me to get myself organized when I can just look up at the wall. I hang it there just with a little command strip. And actually, speaking of command strips, I have found that these are super, super helpful, specifically the command hooks. I use those little ones for things like my calendar or if you guys can see like my little lights and stuff back there. And then I use the bigger hooks for things like my bag, my mask, all that kind of stuff. And they actually make some really cute ones now they used to just have the kind of like 
not so cute ones so so here's my desk and then here is where i keep my mask and my badge whenever i'm alone in my room and these are really actually cute hooks they're black they're really sturdy they're just really great and i have one here where i keep my bag too this is great this bag is just from target I wanted to give you guys a little OOTD for today. I have my white button up, some kind of like camel trousers. I've got ugh, these little brown leather loafers. But yeah, it's kind of fun. In terms of accessories, I have my little wishbone necklace that my husband gave me. I wear it every single day. I wore it on our wedding day. I just love it so much. And then I have my little lady earrings. I think she's so cute. So that is the look. Pretty classic, pretty simple, but I think it does the job and it makes me feel confident and like myself and I love that. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a update on how things are going so far. So we have gone through the meeting in the morning, the W4 class, the like homeroom, pride time, and then we are in the middle of W6. So my kids have left for lunch and I just ate some of my stuff. I, I try to eat things like throughout the day when I have a chance. When you're a teacher, I feel like you just kind of eat when you can. And I really like to like kind of just get stuff done during lunch and not worry about, you know, needing to eat and all that kind of stuff. So that is the update. I just gave the kids like 10-ish minutes at the beginning of class to catch up on all of their missing assignments because, you know, it's the fourth quarter and I'm trying to kind of encourage responsibility throughout the year but especially with the fourth quarter you know it's like these are the little assignments that kind of pile up and then you know if you don't do them at the beginning then they can really bite you in the butt at the end so I'm trying to give them time to get stuff done and not fall behind and take responsibility for their education all that kind of stuff so we will see so that was what we did at the beginning of class and then once they come back we're gonna read a little bit from the house on mango street we're gonna read our vignette and then we are going to answer some questions and that's pretty much gonna be it i think for yeah for w6 and then we will move on to w8 and w8 is kind of gonna be a low-key day it's mostly just a work day on our projects so all right, you guys, so it is 12.18. Go ahead and head on back from lunch. We're gonna get started in just a minute and we are going to jump into, hey, jump into some questions. Make sure that you have completed the attendance link, join the Pear Deck, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna put those links back in the chat. So go ahead and open those up and we're gonna get started with our Pear Deck questions. All right, you guys. So we are out of school and I met up with some friends. This is like hours, hours later actually. After school got out, I went down the hall to visit my friend who teaches in the math department. She's just the best. And we called up brother friend and we just decided to go out for drinks and grilled cheese. And it's just, that's I think the best way to end this video because Truly, no matter what you do in your first year of teaching, the most important piece is that you have a support system, that you have people that, you know, love you no matter what, that are looking out for you no matter what, and, and you have people to kind of end the day with. It was just, it's just the best. Every time I see them, every time we get together after however long, it's just like, it's just the best. So that is the perfect way I feel to end the day and I hope you all enjoyed seeing a day in my life as a first year English teacher. Make sure to like and subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me. Comment down below if you would like me to make a video on how to survive your first year. It's, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot but you will get through it. I'm happy to help. I love you guys so much. Thank you for following along and I will see you next time. Thank you.